you know, all the stuff around Gen AI, it's, it's an interesting revolution. And with generative AI, um, I think we're going to quickly move into this zone. And the, a lot of the Gen AI stuff is going to, on the one hand, it's, I think, going to just be this big upgrade for all of the workflows and products that we've had for a long time. All these completely new things that can now get created. A lot of our vision is that we want to empower all the people who use our products to basically create agents for themselves. Similarly, I think that there's going to be a thing where people basically create their own agents. Uh, every single restaurant, every single website will probably in the future have these AIs. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of think that in the future, just like every business has you know, an email address and a website and a social media account or several. I think in the future, every business is going to have an AI agent that interfaces yeah. with their customers. 안녕하세요. 엔드플랜에 맞춤입니다. 여기 모든 개인과 업체들이 각자의 AI 에이전트를 갖게 될 거라는 남자가 있습니다. 그는 AI 에이전트가 지금의 이메일, SNS와 같은 역할을 하게 될 것이라고 주장하죠. 주인공은 메타의 CEO 마크 주커버그입니다. 그는 생성형 AI의 미래와 메타가 가지고 있는 비전 그리고 메타 AI 스튜디오에 대해서도 소개합니다. 오픈 AI에서 제공하는 GPTs보다 더 네트워킹 기능이 집중된 제품 같습니다. 하지만 아쉽게도 아직 한국에서 사용할 수 없습니다. 이 영상은 얼마 전 열린 시그라프 행사에서 젠슨 황과 마크 주커버그의 대담 형식으로 이루어져 있으며 총 3부의 영상으로 업로드될 예정입니다. Meta, uh, you guys have done amazing AI work. Remember, we all use PyTorch. That comes out of Meta. Uh, the uh, the work that you do in computer vision, the, the work in uh, language models, real-time translation, uh, groundbreaking work. You know, how do you see advances of generative AI at Meta today, and how do you apply it to either enhance your operations or introduce new capabilities that you're offering? So, um, excited to be here. Uh, you know, this year, I'm not just talking about the metaverse stuff, but but also um, all the AI pieces. You know, all the stuff around Gen AI. It's it's an interesting revolution, and 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 I think that it's going to it's going to end up making I think all of the different products that we do, you know, different in in in, in interesting ways. I mean, I, I kind of go through. You can look at the big product lines that we have already. So, things like the you know, feed and recommendation systems and Instagram and Facebook. And we've kind of been on this journey where that's gone from just being about connecting with your friends. And the ranking was always important because you know, even when you were just, um, you know, following friends, you know, if, if someone did something really important, like your cousin had a baby or something, it's like, you want that at the top, you'd be pretty angry at us if we, you know, was buried somewhere down in your feed. Um, so the ranking was, was important. But now over the last few years, it's gotten to a point where more of that stuff is um, is just different public content that's out there. The recommendation systems are super important because now instead of just a few hundred or thousand potential candidate posts from friends, there's millions of, of, of piece of content and that turns into like a really interesting recommendation problem. And with generative AI, um, I think we're gonna quickly move into this zone where not only is, is the majority of the content you know, that you see today on Instagram, you know, just recommended to you from kind of stuff that's out there in the world that matches your interests and whether or not you follow the people. I think in the future, a lot of this stuff is going to be created with these tools too. Some of that is going to be creators using the tools to create new content. Some of it, I think eventually is going to be content that's either created on the fly for you or, or kind of pulled together and synthesized through different things that are out there. So I think that that's just one example of how kind of the core part of what we're doing is just going to evolve. And it's been evolving for, for 20 years already. Well, very that's few gonna... people realize that, that uh, one of the largest computing systems the world has ever conceived of is yeah. a recommender system. Yeah. I mean, one of the big things that just drives quality improvements mm -hmm. is, you know, it used to be that you'd have a different model for each type of content, right? So a, a recent example is, you know, we had you know, one model for ranking and recommending reels and another model for ranking and recommending more long form videos. And then, you know, take some product work to basically make it so that the system can display, you know, anything in line. But, you know, the more you kind of just create more general recommendation models that can span everything, mm -hmm. it just gets better and better. You're, you're just not having these weird inefficiencies of pulling from different pools. So yeah. I, I kind of dream of one day, like you can almost imagine all of Facebook or Instagram being, you know, like a single AI model that has unified all these different content types and systems together that actually have different objectives over different time frames, right? Because some of it is just showing you, you know, what's the interesting content that you're going to be, that, that you want to see today. 
but some of it is helping you build out your network over the long term, right? People you may know or accounts you might want to follow. And now, the thing that's really cool about, about generative AI is, is these days when I use WhatsApp, I feel like I'm collaborating with WhatsApp. I love Imagine. I'm sitting here typing and it's generating the images as I'm going. Yeah. I go back and I change my words. It's generating other images and it generates, you know, a pretty good Real looking time. picture. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's the other half of it. I mean, the, a lot of the Gen AI stuff is going to... On the one hand, it's, I think, going to just be this big upgrade for all of the workflows and products that we've had for a long time. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, there's going to be all these completely new things that can now get created. So meta AI, um, you know, the, the idea of having, you know, just an, an AI assistant that can help you with different tasks and um, in, in our world is going to be, you know, very creatively oriented, like you're saying. Over time, I think, you know, when we move from like the Llama 3 class of models to Llama 4 and beyond, it's... Um, it's gonna, I think, feel less like a chatbot where it's like you you give it a, a, a prompt and it just responds, and then you give it a prompt and it responds, and it's just like back and forth. I think it's gonna pretty quickly evolve to you give it an intent, and it actually can go away on multiple time frames. And I mean, it probably should acknowledge that you gave it an intent up front. But I mean, you know, some of the stuff I think will end up, you know, it'll spin up. You know, compute jobs that take you know, weeks or months or something and then just come back to you when like, something happens in the world. And I think that that's going to be really powerful. AI, AI as, like you, as you know, is kind of turn based You say something, it says something back to you. Um, but obviously, when we think, when we're given a mission or we're giving a problem, you know, we'll, we'll contemplate multiple options or maybe we come up with a, you know, a tree of options, a decision tree, and we walk down to the decision tree simulating in our mind, you know, what are the different outcomes of each decision that we could potentially make. And so we, we're doing planning. And so in the future, AIs will, will kind of do the same. One of the things that, yeah. that I was super excited about when you talked about your vision of creator AI I just think that's, that's a home run idea, frankly. Tell everybody about the Creator AI and AI Studio that's going to enable you to do that. Yeah, so, so we actually, I mean, this is something that we're, we're, you know, we've talked about it a bit, but we're rolling it out a, a, a lot wider today. You know, a lot of our vision is that, I don't think that there's just going to be like one AI model, right? I mean, this is something that some of the other companies in the industry, they're like, you know, it's like they're building like one central agent. And, and yeah, we'll, we'll have the meta AI assistant that you can use, but a lot of our vision is that, we want to empower all the people who use our products to basically create agents for themselves. Whether that's you know, all the many, many millions of creators that are on the platform or you know, hundreds of millions of small businesses. Um, we eventually want to just be able to pull in all your content and very quickly stand up a business agent and um, be able to interact with your customers and you know, do sales and customer support and all that. So the one that we're, that we're just starting to roll out more now is... Um, we call it AI Studio, and it basically is um, a set of tools that eventually is going to make it so that every creator can build sort of an AI version of themselves um, as, as sort of an, an, an agent or an assistant that, that their community can interact with. There's kind of a fundamental issue here where there's, there's just not enough hours in the day, right? It's like if you're, if you're a creator, you want to engage more with your community, um, but you, you, you're constrained on time. And similarly, your community wants to engage with you, uh, but it's tough. I mean, there's, there's just, there's a limited time to do that. So the next best thing is, is it allowing people to basically create these artifacts, right? It's, um, it's sort of, it's an agent, but it, it's, you train it to kind of on, on your material to represent you in the way that you want. I think it, it's, it's a very kind of creative endeavor, almost like a, like a piece of, of art or content that you're putting out there. And you know, it's, it's going to be very clear that it's not engaging with the creator themselves, but I think it'll be another interesting way, just like how creators put out content on, on these um, social systems to be able to have agents that do that. Similarly, I think that there's going to be a thing where people basically create their own agents for all different kinds of uses. Some will be sort of customized utility, things that they're trying to get done that they want to kind of fine tune and and train an agent for. Some of them will be entertainment, and some of the things that people create are just funny, you know, and, and just kind of silly in different ways, or or kind of have a funny attitude about things that, um, you know, we probably couldn't, we, we probably wouldn't build into meta AI as an assistant, but people are, are kind of pretty interested to see um, and interact with. And then one of the interesting use cases that we're seeing is people kind of using these agents for support. This was one thing that, that was a little bit surprising to me is one of the top use cases for meta AI already is people basically using it to role play difficult social 
situations that they're going to be in. So whether it's a professional situation, it's like, all right, I want to ask my manager, like, how do I get a promotion or a raise? Or I'm having this fight with my friend or I'm having this difficult situation with my girlfriend. Like how, how, like, how can this conversation go? And basically having a, like a completely judgment-free zone where you can basically role play that and see how, how, how the conversation will go and, and get feedback on it. Um, but I, a lot of people, they don't just want to interact with the same kind of you know, agent, whether it's Meta AI or ChatGPT or whatever it is that everyone else is using, they want to kind of create their own thing. So that's, that's roughly where we're going with AI Studio, but it's all part of this bigger, I, I guess, view that we have that there shouldn't just be kind of one big AI that people interact with. We, we, we just think that the world will be better and more interesting if there's a diversity of these different things. I just think it's so cool that if you're an artist and you have a style, you could take your style, all of your body of work, you could fine tune yeah. one of your models, yeah. And now this becomes uh, an AI model that you can come and you could prompt it. You could ask me to uh, you know, create something along the lines of the art style that I have. And you might even give me a piece of art as a, a drawing, a sketch as an inspiration, and I can generate something for you. And, it's, and you, you know, come to my bot for that. Uh, yeah. Come to my AI for that. It could be, it could be a, a, every single restaurant, every single website will probably in the future have these AIs. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of think that in the future, just like every business has you know, an email address and a website and a social media account or several, I, I think in the future, every business is going to have an AI agent that interfaces yeah. with their customers. And right. Some of these things I think have been pretty hard to do historically. Like, um, if you think about any company, it's like you probably have customer support is just a separate organization from sales. And that's not really how you'd want it to work as CEO. It's just that, okay, they're kind of different skills. You're building up these, but yeah, when you're CEO, you have to do all this stuff. But, but I mean, then when you build the abstraction into your organization, a lot of times, like the, you know, in general, the organizations are separate because they're kind of optimized for different things. But that's right. I think like the platonic ideal of this would be that it's kind of one thing, right? As a, you know, as a, customer, you don't really care. You know, you don't want to like have a different route when you're trying to buy something versus if you're having an issue with something that you bought. You just want to have a place that you can go and get your questions answered and be able to um, engage with the business in different yeah. ways. And I think that that applies for creators too. I think that the, the kind of personal consumer side of this, so the business version of this is, um, that I think has a little more integration and we're still in, in a pretty early alpha with that. Mm -hmm. But the AI studio, making it so people can kind of create their UGC agents and, and different things and getting started on this flywheel of having creators create them. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. And can, that so can I, can I use AI Studio to fine tune with my images, my collection of images? Yeah, you're, okay. yeah, we're going to get there. And then I could, can I give it, load it, all the things that I've written so that it use it, use it as my rag? Yeah, 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 yeah basically. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah, every and time I come back to it, it loads up the, its memory again, so it remembers where it left off last time. Yep. And we carry on our conversation as, as if nothing ever happened. Yeah, and, and, and look, I mean, like any product, it'll get better over time. The tools for training it will get better. It's not just about what you want it to say. I mean, I think generally creators and businesses have topics that they want to stay away from too, right? So just getting better at all this stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the platonic version of this is not just text, mm -hmm. right? You, you almost want to just be able to, and this is sort of an intersection with some of the codec avatar work that we're doing over time. Mm -hmm. You want to basically be able to have almost like a, a video chat with, with the, um, with the, with the agent, and I think we'll get there over time. I don't think that this yeah. stuff is that far off, but the, um, the flywheel is spinning really quickly. So it's, it's, it's exciting. There is a lot of new stuff to build. And I, I think even if the progress on the foundation models kind of stopped now, which I don't think it will, mm -hmm. I think we'd have like five years of product innovation for the industry to basically figure out how to most effectively use all the stuff that's gotten built so far. But I actually just think the, the kind of foundation models and the progress on the fundamental research is accelerating. So, um, so that it's a, it's a pretty wild time. The thing that I love about, about um, your vision of that everybody can have an AI, that every business can have an AI. In our company, I want every engineer and every software developer to have an AI and, um, or many AIs. Uh, the thing that's that that I love about your vision is you also believe that everybody and every company should be able to make their own AI. So you actually open sourced uh, when you open sourced Llama. I thought that was great. 
I, I thought Llama 2 was probably the biggest event in AI last year. But the reason why I say it was the biggest event was because when that came out, it activated every company, every enterprise, and every industry. All of a sudden, every healthcare company was building AIs, every company was building AI, every large company, small company, startups were, were building AIs. It made it possible for every researcher to be able to re-engage AI again because they have a starting point to do something with. And, and then now... Uh, 3.1 is out, and the excitement is just off the charts. And and I I think it's going to enable all kinds of applications. 여기까지 보셨다면 이어서 마크 주커버그의 오픈 소스 전략에 대해 들어보시죠. 그는 오픈 소스가 단순한 기술 공유를 넘어 생태계 확장과 비용 절감 그리고 산업 전반의 표준화를 이끌어내는 중요한 전략임을 강조합니다. AI의 미래에 대해 관심 있으시다면 꼭 시청해 보세요. 감사합니다.